Hi, my name is Richard Murbach with the Tom George Act Group. Today we are here and we're going to go over some of your basic uh, Garmin on the 8600 series for your Garmin's and specifically the sonar and how to read bottom fine fish uh, and all the different options that you can have with your sonar capability these days. So now we're going to move in here uh, to the screen here and show you some of the sonar stuff. So uh, again, this is the main home screen, if you will, for the sonar in particular. Before we were on the charts, now we're on the sonar. So um, got the sonar clicked and it gives you all these different options. Most people are gonna have your traditional element built into pretty much every sonar system uh, ever built from now to you know 20 years ago. Um, the clear view, side view, live view, down view, these are all newer, um, newer things that have come on the market in the last you know, three to five years. Uh, so we'll just talk about the traditional element for right now. So we'll click on traditional. Uh, I have it set up in a simulation mode, uh, which allows us to still talk about all the capabilities, but actually have something for you to see, considering we are not on the water today. So um, here you see all your bottom contour here. Uh, the main thing with your colors, um, on the traditional element here is your red color. The thicker that red is, the harder the bottom. Um, and a lot of, you know, you see here, this is gonna be bait off the bottom. Uh, this is in a chirp uh, mode, which tells you right down here in the corner. A chirp basically uh, gives you a multitude of frequencies in a certain frequency range. So uh, for the sonar, a lot of people, you have different options. You have a low, you have a medium, and you have a high. You gotta think of it backwards. The highs are for shallower water. The medium would be kind of a good around, all around transducer. And the low would be good for deep water, talking, you know, a thousand feet or more and being able to read bottom in deep, deep water. So uh, the chirp capability gives you the ability to have a multitude of frequencies in a high or low or medium frequency range. Um, on our side of the coast, over here on the west coast of Florida, a high chirp is really really ideal for the waters uh, that we fish in you know 300 feet and less um, and it gives you a good target separation which is really well shown right here so uh, you see maybe this you know could be uh, a wreck because it is uh, you know very very hard all the way up through here there's no space in between the bottom and your big hard piece right here so that now, as you know, it's actually connected to the bottom. Um, and then up above it, it's, you see your different predators uh, or just different bait stacks right there. So those are individual baits. And maybe here with these bigger arches could be, uh, for example, a school of kingfish. And now this is all your bait. Uh, and there's your kingfish watching them uh, with those big arches that you see. So uh, a little more detail on how to dial in your your um, sonar here so we'll go to the menu and we over here <clears throat> now you have different options for zoom or your frequency uh, this particular Everglades that we're on does have two transducers on it um, so we could change the frequency from a low chirp to a high chirp depending on where you're fishing um, and then your gain uh, is also very similar with your radar gain the higher the gain the more sensitive it is but the more clutter you may have in your bottom machine and maybe pick up more of your bubbles from the props and things like that. So um, I like to have it as an auto high. And then from there, if you wanna maybe change it to a medium um, to maybe declutter the uh, sonar there. Um, one big thing is you see it's zoomed all the way out now here in you know 411 feet, uh, zoomed all the way out. If you're bottom fishing, you really wanna dial in and locate on the bottom. So come over here to zoom, hit bottom lock. Now we have, it's backwards, 10, 20, 30, 40, dialed into the bottom. So you know these stacks are here are, are 20 feet off the bottom. That's a little harder to see when you have it zoomed all the way out and you're, um, and you're not able to, to see exactly what's going on the bottom. So that's a good way to have it when you're bottom fishing and you're really trying to figure out, okay, is that a rock? Is that a, a bait? Is that, what is, what am I looking at there? 
uh, on your bottom machine. Again, remember that it's exaggerated, so keep it in mind and have your uh, numbers in your head here as you're watching the machine. Um, you can change this as well and set it somewhere depending on maybe where you want it to be. Uh, zoom out. So maybe you want to be dialed in on the bottom, but still be able to see uh, what's going on up above the water column. So that now maybe gives you a better idea. You can see all the way up to 260 feet and then the bottom being at 350, 370. So there's a lot of different frequencies there that you can play around with. There's an easy one here where you can um, play with it without going into the menu or then you just hit the auto and it'll automatically change the, uh, the contour depending on how far out you're, you have it set. Um, <clears throat> you can quickly turn it off and have it untransmit or not. Um, that is a nice thing to do if you're keeping the boat on the trailer. Uh, to turn it off while you're not in the water, these transducers do want to stay in the water um, and uh, not have any long-term issues with that transducer. Um, there's a ton of different things you can dial in through here, but the main thing is understanding um, your frequencies, your mediums, your highs, your lows, and how you want to set yourself up for success when you're going out there fishing uh, and really dial in that bottom machine. Um, you know, over here in the west coast of Florida, all we do is bottom fishing. So being able to read your bottom, understanding what's a good mark, what's a bad mark. Um, and the best way to do that is get your boat on the water, and drop a line in and figure out what's going on down there. And then you know what you're looking at. Um, you know, so over time you get to learn of, hey, that's a, that's a bait, that's a, a bait stack or that's uh, a, a, a grouper stack. You know, you can see, you can tell the difference um, depending once you once you get out there and you start dropping wet your line. So um, again, coming in here, playing with these things, figuring it out, getting your boat on the water is going to be the best way um, for you to continue to understand and really figure that out to maximize your success in the water. Thanks for watching.